Hi, I'm Herb Gross, and welcome once again to our Math as a Second Language video series, where today we're going to be discussing adding and subtracting common fractions. And I'd like to make a couple of introductory remarks before we really get into the topic. The first one is, I've often heard students, and sometimes even teachers, say everything was going great until we got to fractions. And my feeling is, everything wasn't going great if fractions caused a problem. Because what I intend to show you today is that by using the concept of quantities versus numbers, that once you know whole number arithmetic, the units take care of the rest, and whole number arithmetic and the arithmetic of fractions are verbatim. They're exactly the same. The second thing I want to emphasize is I do not have a problem with people using memorized or traditional algorithms. The problem I have is with people who use the, the algorithms but have no sense of what they really mean. In other words, it's not the rote learning that's bad. It's, not, it's that you don't sometimes learn the logic that's behind it. So I thought I would start by showing you, in terms of how I do fractions, namely the old way, uh, and let's just see what's going on. Let me sh show you an example. Suppose I was faced with the problem of having, having to add two-fifths and three-eighths. The way I was taught was you had to line the fractions up vertically. I really thought that was a rule. I really thought you could never add fractions horizontally. Then we were told, find the common denominator. Well, with five and eight, five times eight is 40. That wasn't much of a problem. And then the mystic rule went on. Divide 5 goes into 40 8 times. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 goes into 40 5 times. 5 times 3 is 15. Now what you do is, is you keep the common denominator, which is 40, and add the two numerators. And notice that the numerators are whole numbers. 16 plus 15 is 31. You do not have to know fractions to know that 16 plus 15 is 31. So the answer is 31 fortieths. I have no problem with that. The problem I have is that people sometimes don't have any feeling as to what it means. So now I want to show you how our simple three rules for the arithmetic of quantities helps us in a problem such as this. First of all, we said we don't add the adjectives unless they're modifying the same unit. In other words, the two-fifths and the three-eighths have to be with respect to the same unit. Well, what does two-fifths tell us? This tells us, remember, generically, generically, the cornbread will always represent the unit. So I'm going to be taking two-fifths of the cornbread, which means I want the number of pieces in the cornbread to be divisible by five. I'm also taking three-eighths, so I want the number of pieces to be divisible by eight. So I'm going to assume that there are 40 pieces to the cornbread. Now, what's two-fifths of 40? If you divide 40 into five equal parts, each part is eight. See, five goes into 40 eight times. You're taking two of those pieces, so you're taking eight twice. That's 16 pieces. What's three-eighths? of 40 pieces. Well, you're dividing 40 into eight equal parts. 40 divided by eight is five. You're taking three of those pieces. Three times five is 15. So if we change the nouns, catch this now. If we change the nouns from cornbreads to pieces, there are no more fractions here. We're adding 16 pieces and 15 pieces. And since the pieces are all the same size, we can add the adjectives. It's 31 pieces. And just to check this, what did we get the traditional way? We wrote that 2 fifths was the same as 16 fortieths. 3 eighths was the same as 15, 30th, uh, 15 fortieths. This looks much more threatening than this. But notice that the word piece, which is a unit, is what? one of the 40 pieces that it takes to make the cornbread. In other words, we stated the problem in terms of cornbreads. We want the answer in terms of cornbreads. Well, we don't have 31 cornbreads. What do we have? We have 31 pieces 
that's 31 of the 40 that it takes to make one cornbread. So you see what's happened now is that we have now shown where this algorithm comes from. I can now use this mechanically any time that I want, which basically I do all the time. I don't think about this every time I add fractions. It's that I know that this is what I'm doing, okay? Now, once I know that, you don't have to pick the cornbread. If you say that's too abstract, well, for example, let's talk about a circle. How much is two-fifths of a circle plus three-eighths of a circle? Well, again, what's another name for a circle? 360 degrees. So with, we want to comp take two-fifths of 360. We want to take three-eighths of 360 and add them together. Same re recipe. 360 divided by 5 is 72. 72 times 2 is 144. So two-fifths of the circle is 144 degrees. Again, notice it's a whole number. 360 divided by 8 is 45. So an eighth of a circle is 45 degrees. So three groups of 45 degrees is 135 degrees. So now instead of adding two-fifths of a circle plus three-eighths of a circle, we're adding 140 degrees to 135 degrees. These are whole numbers. The answer is 279 degrees. And just to check this out, notice that if you take 31 40ths of 360, 360 divided by 40 is 9. 31 times 9 is 279. Again, the same answer. All whole number arithmetic. The fractions, the denominators, denominations, they're just the nouns. They're just the units. See? Business expenses, same kind of a thing. I have two partners. One is going to reimburse me for two-fifths of my expenses. The other is going to reimburse me for three-eighths of my expenses. So what am I going to do? To personify what I did before when I picked 40 as my common denominator, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at what happens for every $40 of my business expenses. In other words, I still want an amount that's divisible by five and eight. So I'm going to assume that the cornbread represents my business expenses and that the cornbread is sliced into 40 pieces. So again, what am I going to be doing? Same thing I did before. 40 divided by five is eight. Eight times two is 16. This should be looking very repetitious now. It's the same thing we did before. 40 divided by 8 is 5. 5 times 3 is 15. So your first partner is giving you 16 pieces out of every 40. Second one is giving you 15 pieces out of every 40. So together they give you what? 16 plus 15, 31 pieces out of every 40. In other words, what this says is, leave out. see, we can leave out the nouns now because we see that it works for the cornbread. Two-fifths of something plus three-eighths of the same something will always be 31 fortieths of that same something. Look at how complicated this looks compared to saying 16 pieces plus 15 pieces is 31 pieces. Look at how much we've simplified the math by just by using the word piece, which is not threatening, it's a whole number, one piece, to replace the idea of 1 fortieth, one of what it takes 40 of to make the whole cornbread. So I hope you're beginning to see the idea of what it is uh, that we're doing. Now, you do have to be careful. You do have to be careful. You have to remember that the two fractions have to be modifying the same noun when you add. See, let me give you an example. Suppose one store is charging at a rate of two pence for $5. Another store is selling the same pens at a rate of three pence for $8. This doesn't make sense to say you can now buy 31 pens for $40. You see, th this is store A, we'll call it, and this is store B. And so you're now looking at two different cornbreads. In other words, two for $5 and three for $8. And by the way, many students, when they see a fraction like one half plus one third, they want to add across. They want to say, oh, this is an addition problem. One plus one is two. Two plus three is five. And you don't get this, the right answer for this problem that way, but you do get the right answer 
to this problem. In other words, if you bought one group at a rate of two pens for $5 and another group of pens at a rate of three pens for $8, then altogether you've bought five pens, see, two pens and three pens, and you've paid a total of $13. But that's not how you add fractions, and that's why I put a circle around this. This is a very special thing. It's the wrong answer for the problems that we've been talking about so far, but it's a very important concept in math called the weighted average that we'll be talking about in our next presentation. But for now, that brings us to our close of today's lesson, which usually is, a, is signified by what? We do a practice problem in which I write the problem down here. And uh, what's going to happen is you look at this problem, which common fraction names the greater amount and by how much? Two-thirds or three-sevenths? Pause the video, do the problem, and after you finish the problem, you come back and watch my solution, okay? And see how it compares with yours. Now, a good way to do this particular problem, first of all, just by looking, can you, do you already have enough feeling for fractions to know that this has to be the bigger one? even though the two and the three are smaller than the three and the seven. This is what? You're taking two of the three parts. That's more than half. See, half, okay? You're taking two out of three. Half would be two out of four. So you're taking more than half. Here, you're taking three out of seven. Three out of six would be half. So this, is, this number here is less than a half. This number here is greater than a half. So if all the problem said was, which is greater, we'd already know the answer without doing anything more. The tricky part says, but by how much? And this is where you might want to use something as common as uh, unit pricing. Let's go back to pens that you're buying pens. Suppose one person is selling pens at a rate of two pens for $3. Another person is selling the same pens at a rate of three pens for $7. Notice that here you're getting more pens, but you're also paying much more money. So we really don't know which rate is better just by looking, or by how much better just by looking. But we can compare these for, how would you compare these? You would use a common price. See, what's a common multiple of $3 and $7? Three times seven is 21. I'm good at math, not spelling. So 21, let's see what happens. For every $21, how many pens would you get? Well, if, to spend $21, you'd have to spend $3 seven times. And every time you spend $3, you would get two pens. So if you spend $3 seven times, you would get two pens seven times. That's where your mechanical recipe comes from when you say three goes into 21 seven times and seven times two is 14. In other words, at a rate of two pens, for $3, you'd be able to buy 14 pens for $21. Now, what happens with three pens for $7? Well, you need three groups of seven to make $21. So if you bought, if you spend $7 three times, you would get three pens three times. In other words, this rate is nine pens for $21. And now you can compare these because the numerators are modifying the same denominations. And 14 pens is five pens more than nine pens. In, in other words, uh, in terms of the pens, what you're really saying is what? That if you buy from this store for every $21 you spend, you'll get five more pens, okay? So what are you saying? If you want to do this abstractly, two-thirds is the same, if we leave the nouns out, two-thirds is the same as this, see? Leave the nouns out. Three-sevenths is the same as nine-twenty-firsts. Now the fractions have the same denominator. If the nouns are the same, you can compare the adjectives. The difference between nine and 14 is five. Five what? Five-twenty-firsts. So in other words, uh, if you wanted to word this in the language of uh, fractions, you could say that two-thirds 
minus three sevenths is five twenty first. Look how scary this looks to the uninitiated as compared to saying that 14 pence for $21 is a better deal than 9 pence for $21 because you get five more pens for every, one, every $21 you spend. Now, what I'm hoping is that by what I've gone through today, you saw two things. I am not telling you to do anything differently from what you've been doing before. If you enjoy watching the students use the traditional algorithm, that's fine. I am saying two things. One is I think they will see it more clearly if we use the adjective noun theme. And secondly, I really believe this, if you were to use the adjective noun theme first so they could actually see what was happening, actually see the cornbread sliced up and how many pieces you're taking, the algorithm would make much more sense to them. Anyway, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Until next time, stay well, have fun, and I'm looking forward to seeing you for our next lecture.